day two of Vlogmas. Today I've got lots of dyeing to do again, but today I have my cocoa top on, and this is a pattern by Tilly in the Buttons, and it's a standard sort of sleeve with a option to have like a, I think it's, it's not a cowl neck, it's a sort of 1960s style sort of upright neck that you can choose but you don't have to do this neckline there is other options as well on the pattern and it's got some the option to have little cuffs like this three quarter length sleeves i think there's a longer sleeve version but i never really make long sleeve tops and so i just stick to the three quarter length the fabric that I used for this was a double knit fabric that I picked up from a fabric shop in Shrewsbury and it was called Watson and Thornton. I don't know if they sell an awful lot of fabrics online but it is a lovely shop to visit if you are going past Shrewsbury at any time. They do some lovely quality jersey fabrics. So the cocoa is one of my favourite patterns actually and I re need to revisit it and make some more of these because they're really cosy and slightly thicker for the cooler weather. I'll leave links to the patterns and the shop that I mentioned in the description bar down below and I need to show you my socks I'm wearing today. So as it's advent and everyone's got lots of yarny goodness from their advent calendars to make into something lovely, I thought I'd show you a couple of the things that I've made in past years with the little advent minis. So first of all, I have my northeasterly scarf, which I actually, this should be a blanket pattern, but I made it into a scarf instead or wrap. And I basically just did four rows of these little chevrons as per pattern, but obviously with the blanket you do lots more. But then I added an eye cord around the edge all the way around. So I think that that's um, a nice way to make something with your minis, because if you do decide that you want to carry on, you can always make a blanket with it. So that's what that one looks like. And I did the eye cord all the way around the outside. And I just kept knitting it until it was the length that I wanted it to be really and I thought that four rows would be plenty wide enough. I think I knitted this on 2.5 millimetre needles so it's, it's a relatively dense fabric and very very cosy for the winter. So that's the first one I've got to show you and I have the Adventina wrap and this is a pattern by Katrin Schubert. Oh I don't know if I told you about the, the North Easterly blanket was by Skinanigans and this one is the Adventina wrap by Katrin Schubert but I will leave links in the description bar down below to whose patterns they are and what the patterns are called. So this is the Adventina wrap. This pattern originally had some lace panels in it but I decided just to do garter stitch just because I wanted something nice and easy to knit over the festive period. I actually ended up doing it pretty long. <laughs> I used up quite a bit of my advent from last year on this one and I think it was from Flourish Fibres, the main advent that I used, and it was a naturally dyed advent. And I picked out lots of other little minis that were out of my stash as well. And this one I did quite big. I think I probably did it longer than the pattern said, but I do like a long, large shawl. So that's another one. And I tried to fade the colours from one to another so, so they sort of blended nicely. So that's that one. It goes right down to nearly my knees really <laughs> and finally I'm just going to show you the new pattern that I've just released and this is my Cupid's Arrow wrap with lots of lovely tassels on the ends and both ends are different or the ends are different to each other and I like to wear it round the neck like I showed you with the others but with this one because it is slightly wider you can wear it as a wrap as well so I really should put these on and titivate it in a mirror before I show it on the videos really but at least you get the idea but then you can see all the tassels on the ends. So those are the three options that I would suggest for, for using your advent minis. So there are no end of things that you could make. To be honest you could knit some stripy scrappy socks, I think that's a lovely idea too. So I still haven't decided what I'm going to make. I'll have another look on Ravelry and to see if there's any new patterns that I quite fancy and if I see some that I fancy I'll share them with you. So first I need to open my advent for today. Well, 
I'm all for Christmas. All the happy smiles and the wishes, and I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe. Tell me one thing: Is there anything that you're missing? I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow. Whatever we do, we will be all right. These holiday wonders will open your mind. May all your wishes tonight come true. The love I live, the dream I knew, this Christmas. I normally try and do 20 minutes of cross stitch every day, but today and yesterday I haven't had time, but I'm hoping to get back into the habit tomorrow. But first I need to show you the footage I recorded yesterday of blocking my shawl, which I'm really excited about. So I finished my slip extravaganza, my Stephen West mystery knit along, and I finally cast off all those stitches, but I'm gonna block it so that I can show it on the podcast on Thursday. And also, Adam's mum has finished knitting this cowl for me, and it looks all wrinkly, but it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous once I've blocked it. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna block these. So I've got a couple of bowls with sort of lukewarm water in, ready. And I tend to use eucalam for washing my knits or you can use the solid soaps you get for washing your knits or like a wool wash you can get from the supermarket so I just stick a little bit in each bowl I've got two separate ones just in case the colours run um, they shouldn't do but just in case plus this slip extravaganza shawl is quite big anyway so I'll mix it up a bit and I'll just Carefully push that into the water. And I'm just going to leave that to soak for 20 minutes. I'm going to do the same with this one. And the pattern for this one is called the Midsummer Haze Pattern by Hobie Logatelli. And it's in one of my own hand dyed yarns in the Alpaca Cashmere and Silk Base. It's a four ply weight, but. Um, really love how soft it is. So I'm going to leave those for 20 minutes now and come back and we can squeeze all the water out and we can get blocking. So I've squeezed all the water out of the shawls or cowl as well. The slip extravaganza is absolutely massive so I'm hoping I can be able to squeeze the other one here once I finish blocking um, this one. So I've got some blocking mats, well they're not proper blocking mats, they're from a DIY store to sort of protect the floor and they're big blocking mats so they were actually cheaper than buying knit pro ones so i've just spread it out onto the blocking mats and i'm going to try and sort of stretch out the shawl before i start pinning it so i know how far i need to bring these ends around the top because these triangles need to be sort of stretched out so that they can be blocked to a point so I'm using some Knit Pro um, knit blockers and they're basically strips of plastic with the pins all the way down the side and I prefer to use these because I find them quicker to apply than just normal T-pins and this shape of shawl isn't ideal for using the blocking wires so that's why I'm going to use these. So I'm just going to start pinning this top edge. I think that I've brought these round enough to be able to splay out the triangles at the edges enough so fingers crossed just blocking the top edge first and then I can splay out the triangles around the bottom edge that looks much better once the edges are pulled out a bit I think it'll look better still Well, I'm all for Christmas All the happy smiles and the wishes And I want it all from the light Adam's having a go because I can't reach over there <laughs> He's having a bit of difficulty though I don't think he's very practised in using blocking 
pins. That's perfect. Next one. Next one. <laughs> right, so we've got the cowl here in the space. I think we can just about fit it. But obviously, you've got a tube with a cowl, which is a bit of a difficulty. So I'm trying to line up the back and the front at the top here. And I've tried to line up the centre back and the centre front as well. The love I live, the dream I know This Christmas I only want to be close to you I'm trying to flute this out a little bit because we want the lace to open up a bit. The there's points on this cowl, so you need to pin the points like as a single point. So I've pinned the underneath ones sort of at an angle, um, and attempting to try and make these pins so that they don't interfere with the top layer once I've folded it over. And I'm going to pin that on top of the other shawl. This is um, how haphazard my blocking is. <laughs> I'm just going to push this in to the blocking mat a bit more so that it doesn't stick into the cowl. The love I live, the dream I knew. Well, I'm all for Christmas. It's a magical time full of kisses. Take a walk outside and tickle the snowman's snow. Go. I think that'll do. It's a bit annoying that I've had to overlay it with the other shawl, but I think that's pulling out enough and it's thin enough to dry. So I'm just going to leave that overnight to dry and hopefully it'll be dry by the end of the day tomorrow. So here's how it looks in the daylight. So you can see the colours a little bit better. So I'm going to leave it blocking until tomorrow to give it plenty of time to dry and then I can unpin it and show it on the podcast. But I love, I think this bit is my favorite bit of the slip extravaganza. And um, I'm really pleased with how this has come out. It's a bit annoying, <laughs> I'd run out of space and I had to go over the top, but because it's relatively lightweight yarn, I'm sure it'll dry fine. So I did manage to finish the heel flap and heel turn yesterday, which I'm really pleased about. I just love a slip stitch texture on the heel. It looks really pretty. And I can actually pick up the stitches down the sides of the heel flap tonight. Welcome home, Adam. Thank you. It's Advent time. Yeah, we need chocolate and and a bit of something to drink. Yes. Go on. Number two. Number two. Oh, there's a few in this one. We've got a lint, a Maltesers. It's one right at the bottom. Oh look, and a little teddy bear. Ooh. A lint, a lint. Show us your chocolates, come on. Is that a lint one? Yeah, are you going to share it with me? No. Ah! <laughs> Let's do your Harry Potter, shall we, before yes. you start munching. Harry Potter. It's Christmas, I only want to be close to you. Ooh, it's a bit of castle. Oh no, Harry's going to be alone for a while longer. Yeah, just a bit of castle. Ta-da! Well done, Adam. You've managed to build a little castle and we've got an extra bit though yeah are you sure you've not done it wrong no it's a spare one i think <laughs> you hope <laughs> it's time for my advent now and i hope i'm going to get some nice lint chocolate otherwise i know that you've been tampering with the advent calendars has <laughs> i haven't even looked where number two is ah here we are little bird and i can already feel that they're bounties. No lint chocolate for me. <laughs> well, I'm all for Christmas. It's a magical time full of kisses. Take a walk outside and tickle the snowman's nose. Moving nimbly. Did you hear something 
from the chimney. I will keep you warm as soon as you remove. 